9000's Primetime Wrestling. Woo! So, I'll occasionally talk about wrestling on my channel, but it's not something that I've massively gone into. But I just watched Ric Flair's last match. And I mean last matches in the one he's just had. Because, you know, he's had a few last matches. The guy is about 73, he's got a pacemaker. You know, he's far, far away from his glory days. Now, there's all kinds of ways to look at this. And one is, should he have even done it? I mean, I used to be a rugby player. And years ago, I was hit by a car. And I essentially had to have metal plates on my leg and learn to walk again. And I was told not to play rugby. And I didn't. And I stopped. And unfortunately, some people don't seem to do that. You can have injury after injury. And they just feel they have to get back into their sport of choice. And I can understand the feelings behind this. I can understand the desire. But is it a good thing? Probably not, I'd say. The match itself, well, it was instantly apparent that the speed was going to be slightly slower. Because Ric Flair came out and he didn't strut so much as stumble. And it's horrible saying this because, you know, I'm a big fan of the man. But it's not Ric Flair, is it? It's not the Ric Flair that we grew up on. When I heard it was a tag match, I thought very much that Flair would be on the outside for 99% of it and get tagged in to do a few quick moves and have the win. And it's not that at all. You're getting a lot of Flair for your time here. It's surprisingly a pretty long match, really, with a lot of involvement from him. You're not going to see every signature Ric Flair thing you thought you would, probably because he's not capable of some of them anymore. But... You know, spoilers here. Yeah, there's some blading. It wouldn't be a Ric Flair match without a bit of blading, would it? But I am really, really hoping that this is his last match. The man needs to seriously hang up his belts. He's done enough. It's nice to see all of the wrestlers who are legends in their own right, like The Undertaker, Mick Foley, Bret Hart, turn up to watch him. It's better than I thought it would be. But I really think... A 73-year-old with a pacemaker shouldn't have been allowed in the ring for legal reasons. And, you know, at the end of the day, he's a man with a family and friends. And this went all right. He went through it. He got out the other end of it. But I can't help but think it could have gone a lot worse. OK, it's Kerr 9000 signing off, saying thank you for watching. Hi, and thanks for checking out my video and making it to the end. If you'd like to subscribe, there's a little thing down there. Yep, yep, there. And you should also see some links to some other videos on the screen now. I make reviews of horror films, video games, sci-fi films, and all sorts of stuff. Or you can catch me on J Arcade. Okay, take care. Have a great day. Bye.